Hey everyone, the 6.5 is on the road. We are here in Chicago at Microsoft Ignite 2024, my old stomping ground. Spent four decades here. Yes, I moved to Austin, but this will always be sweet home Chicago to me. Anyways, really excited for this episode. We're gonna be talking about AI. We're gonna talk about the development of applications, the overall ecosystem, and we're gonna have some great guests here on the show today. So without further ado, I want to bring Mike, Lauren, Chris, all three of you joining from Weights and Biases, Pinecone, Microsoft, and we're going to talk a little bit on the ecosystem and you know the partnerships, why you all are partnering with Microsoft, why you're building with Microsoft. But first and foremost, how are we all doing today? Absolutely amazing. Great. Yeah, great to be great. here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So, Mike, let's start with you. Yep. It's the Microsoft Show. You got it. You can't see the logo over there. That's uh, <laughs> right here. Um, Talk a little bit about the strategy that you have when it comes to partnering with ISVs, mm -hmm. you know, how you're kind of selecting, picking, building, and working together to get mm -hmm. to the solutions that yeah. the market is looking for. Yeah, absolutely. So the ecosystem is hugely important for us, uh, especially when it comes to really key areas like developers. So if you look across the market, you look at all the startups that have been funded over the last year, actually 27% of them actually fit right in that category of AI toolchain. So developers have access to an incredible set of services, and many of them are getting a ton of traction, they're being embraced by the developer community, and it's really a hallmark of our platform that we make our platform extensible and open and flexible for what developers really need to use in their day-to-day -day lives. Some of these tools are really innovative in bringing in new capabilities, so we want to provide direct access to those services for them. Now we're going to continue to deliver a complete end-to-end -end stack of technology from our own services, but actually we even invite services that you might consider to be competitive to ones that we offer because we want to offer that developer choice and flexibility as much as possible. And you've actually seen some great examples here of some new partnerships and some expanded partnerships that we've had in our portfolio. Well, I mean, you think about these sort of heterogeneous environments that most companies, most enterprises are building in, right? It's not. It, it, as much as every one of the hyperscale cloud providers, like I say, they're building everything here. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen over the last several years, combination, prem, cloud, multi-cloud, the expansion. And um, I imagine that's sort of driving the integrations though that you're, you're picking and choosing and leading mm -hmm. with a little bit. Can you, can you talk a little bit about kind of the integrations that you are driving here and maybe a little yeah. bit about specifically here at Ignite? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we look for a couple of things. One is, you know, are there services like Weights and Biases and Pinecone that are getting tons of traction in the market. We actually want to look for leaders in their spaces and say, if you're a developer and you're already using this particular technology, or if you're an operator and you're using some technology in that area as well, we actually want you to be able to access that and plug it in really easily. Um, the other thing is we want people to have some confidence. If we're bringing in a relationship, we want those same organizations to know this is something they can run with confidence. They can start to use that technology. It has um, some integrations and some great collaborations with Microsoft. And so there's some momentum behind that to make it even more, um, you know, more confident that they can use that technology in their production apps as well. And, and Chris and Lauren, I'd, I'd love to get your take. As, a, and as an industry analyst, we love to hear, you know, of course, Microsoft will tell us why everyone chooses to build with Microsoft. But, you know, as the third party, you're sort of what we call the ground truth. Um, <laughs> You know, it's just part of what we have to do, always kind of trying to discern what are the selection processes? How are you working? How are you building? You know, Chris, I'll start with you. Um, you know, what was the sort of key criteria for your selection in terms of partnering with Microsoft? And talk a little bit about the depth and in, in, in the partnership and how that's developing. Sure. So at Weights and Biases, our North Star, our mission is to build the best tools for AI developers. And uh, we've sold our tools to over a thousand enterprises now. Um, across many different industries, and many of those enterprises have, have chosen Azure as their, as their core platform provider. Um, especially in the new Gen AI world, there's a lot of uh, serious thought and care taken around the security and compliance side of where all this data is flowing, how it, it moves through these various systems, and uh, companies are trusting Azure to kind of be that silo in many cases. So we really wanted to bring weights and biases directly to them and, and make it super easy for those enterprises to, to use our tools. And Chris, by the way, just for everyone out there that maybe hasn't heard of, Lauren, you'll get this shot too. Um, but the, the weights and biases, cool name, 
if you're kind of in this space and you've been in the, the LLM or building models, you maybe can kind of piece it together. But any any backstory on the weights and biases name beyond that, what kind of just obviously hits me as a <laughs> AI guy? Yeah, uh, you know when we named the company, um, we we are developers. We love to understand how things work from the inside and. When we thought of the name Weights and Biases, we thought, okay, this is a name where our users, like the ML researchers, the, the people building the next generation of model is gonna know exactly what these words mean for them, whereas the general public might not have um, a good sense. So there was this kind of like insider yeah. um, club nature of it. Uh, and I think it's, it's served us well. I'm a big fan of the name. Yeah, it's a bit of a, <laughs> it's like a speakeasy. You know, I got the knockdown. Lauren, um, <laughs> mine go less of a speakeasy. Yeah. Well, I mean, but it's, it's still a great name. It, it is a unique name. You don't forget it, and um, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit yeah. about the partnership. But maybe beforehand, since Chris just gave us a bit of the background, what is the what is the Pinecone story? What is you got it? Pinecone's been around for five years. Um, very well known for being a great vector database company. In the recent years, we've also launched an inference and assistant product, all under kind of one mission, which is to make AI knowledgeable. That's kind of what we come to work doing every day. Um, in terms of the Microsoft partnership, we have long worked with Microsoft in terms of supporting developers on the Azure platform. What we're super excited about talking about this week is actually more of our native integration into Azure. Mm -hmm. So everything from unified billing, single sign-on, you know, authentication roles and controls, um, it's just going to make a more seamless experience basically for our developers. Um, Pinecone currently has about 5,000 net new developers sign up every single week. And of those, Azure is obviously a critical uh, part of that. Yeah, it seems like you've been growing really quick. And so mm -hmm. when, you know, Mike, when I hear her talk about kind of the native integrations, mm -hmm. you know, talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what's driving, mm -hmm. the driving force. Is this becoming more the standard? Is it right. happening more? How big is, by the way, this ISV ecosystem now that's really driving this sort of AI evolution? Yeah, it's great. So, Revolution? Which yeah, word? Absolutely, a little bit of both. <laughs> um, so, you know, we actually offer three really interesting ways that we can work with our um, ISV partners, um, like, like what we have here. So there's the kind of the service integration that we have, and that's great. It offers a kind of a, um, a, a good entry point for people to be able to use our technologies together. That's a little bit of what we're doing with weights and biases this week. Second is uh, what we alluded to right here, which is the Azure native integrations. And that's really a curated program. We have only 15 uh, ISVs that are brought into that program because we want to make sure that what we're providing there is really the, the best in class solutions for developers. So what that gives you is um, native accessibility for developers through the Azure portal, through the CLI, um, uh, and, uh, and also through our SDK. And uh, we talked about unified billing and management and some other things that make it really easy to access those technologies. That's really where we're bringing services that we see that have a ton of developer traction, and we bring it right to where the developers are already working, make it really easy for them to use. So you mentioned only 15, is there some key criteria that's sort of driving? Is yeah, it um, so we obviously look for uh, organizations that have a great amount of market traction. We want to make sure that they get sort of that Microsoft blessing as they come into that, that any developers that's using uh, that technology knows that they're getting a real best-in-class technology and one that has a lot of great market traction and stability. Um, we are opening up that program and making it a little bit more of a accessible program, so we do uh, uh, perceive a, you know, an expansion of that in the future, but uh, we really are selecting how we go out and, and find those right uh, technologies to work with. The third way that we bring it in is through our application templates. And this is actually something that we just launched. There's uh, uh, 25 application templates that are available today. These are everything from developer building blocks to solutions that give you uh, the ability to build an application in under five minutes. Um, and what we've done is pre-built in many of our integrations with our partners, Pinecone is one of them, yep. um, who can actually have a pre-built template. Uh, now you have the flexibility of working with the Pinecone vector database technology right in a uh, easy to use developer uh, pre-made template and you can get up and running really quickly. If you choose to use the Pinecone solution, you have an option for that. It's really a great way of making that easy for developers and giving our partners another path to really engage with a broad set of developers using our portfolio. Well, that's great, Mike. And, and, and Lauren, you sort of alluded to this when you when I asked about the introduction of the sure. partnership, but you have some announcements here, right? Mm -hmm. So just being clear, so there's, there's some new things. So you've had this historic Correct. partnership, but so just double click for the audience out there. Yeah. What is new here at Ignite in terms of this partnership with uh, Pinecone and Correct. Microsoft? So you could always have been using Azure from a cloud hosting perspective and also licensing our vector database solution. 
What's new is now these native integrations. And so I think both in terms of unlocking just sort of the ease of use of unified billing and single sign-on, et cetera, but then also to the point of supporting those templates, reducing developer toil, so that when you're kind of getting set up, like you can immediately start configuring your vectors, et cetera, directly into Pinecone. Um, the only other announcement we have is Pinecone that we're gonna be talking more about this week is also our inference product. So this is kind of bringing re-rankers and embedding models a lot closer to the vector database itself. Once again, under the guise of reducing developer toil, kind of creating more of that innovation under one roof. And so that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about this week. I, I imagine there's an element of efficiency in all this because of Tremendous how fast. efficiency. Right, how fast is expect, are these, these developers are expected to move yeah. to keep this I fresh. Mean, I think for us, like when we started the company five years ago, vector databases like were not new per se, right? They've yeah. <laughs> been around yeah. for some time. I think their you know, ease of use and commercial viability was sort of new. ChatGPT obviously came out. The AI wave started people are really using more and more vector search capabilities. And what we've now found with a lot of our developers is that they don't just want the vector search capability set, they want broader support with inference assistant, integrating different models, integrating more deeply into Azure. And so we're really customizing our roadmap based on what those 5,000 plus developers every week are asking us for. Absolutely, and, uh, and, and Chris, can you talk a little bit about the, the weights and biases uh, integrations with Azure? Yeah, sure. So. Uh, this week we're announcing our Azure uh, OpenAI fine-tuning integration. So teams that are you know, fine-tuning an OpenAI model can actually see all of those metrics and information about that job tracked directly in the weights and biases system of record. And this is really important for teams because they're, they're often using our tool because they want that central pane of glass that uh, wherever they're, they're kind of training their models or the work that they're doing in their research, they're able to capture those insights in, in one place so that the team can continue to iterate and um, to make uh, these models ultimately better. And the other big announcement is our Azure native integration as well. So folks will be able to kind of bring a completely isolated instance of the Weights and Biases platform directly into their Azure VPC uh, and keep all of that data siloed in uh, you know, one specific region or, or AZ. It sounds like you, uh, you all have a lot of excitement here, a couple of, of really uh, intense days ahead, and hopefully everything's really, really well received. You know, Mike, it's been great to hear from the partners. Appreciate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Microsoft pulling them together, bringing you all on, onto the 6.5. You know, we talked about the secret knock a little bit, but <laughs> it also sounds to me like it's, it's, it's becoming something based on the demand and the opportunity that there's a lot of enthusiasm and excitement about. So for those that are sort of, you know, maybe out there, ISVs that are out there that are hearing Absolutely. and they have a yeah. place, talk a little bit about, yeah. you know, what you recommend. How do they get started? How do they become yeah. part of this uh, this not so secret secret club that we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, you know, I love that we have so many great options for people to start looking for how they can partner with us, start to build integrations. The Azure Native Integrations Program, uh, it's great that we're going to be expanding uh, that program as well and creating a little bit more of an open door for people to bring their solutions in. You know, in the end, it's all about, you know, developer experience and really keeping developers in their flow, less context switching, you know, more time saved, using the services that they know and they love, and the flexibility that we're giving them, I think, is really a key thing for us. You know, one of the other areas that uh, we like to say is that, you know, it's a two-way street because many of these technologies are, they have great traction with the startup community and the organizations that are really maybe AI native. Uh, you can see great examples of um, those customers within these partners and others. Um, and this is a great way for us to extend there. That's a part of our business that's grown 200% over the last year. And that's in part to the fact that we have extended out to our partners and, and brought them in and, and created channels for both of us to access those customers. Likewise, then, we have great opportunities for our partners to reach our enterprise customers mm -hmm. and to bring in um, these great solutions into a broader set of organizations um, where they can expand their footprint and continue to grow. So it's really a synergistic program. I'd say to any AI, AI ISV out there, any tool chain provider, um, this is a great opportunity for us to partner. Um, we can bring in a range of complementary solutions and new ways that help developers. And if you fit those criteria, then uh, we have some great opportunities to grow your business and grow with us as well. Well, Mike, Lauren, Chris, uh, very exciting times. Thank you all very much for spending some time here and uh, have a great rest of your Ignite. And congratulations okay. on all the success, all the progress. Look forward to watching this continue to evolve. Great. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Thank you.
and thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of The 6-5. We are on the road here at Microsoft Ignite 2024 in Chicago, Illinois. For this episode, I got to say goodbye, but hit that subscribe button, be part of our community. We hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.